Hey there, I am here with my girl Melody Miles today and I am so excited to dive into this conversation but first let me introduce her. Melody's past life, uh, she was an international expert at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation where she helped launch the global campaign to eradicate malaria. After working in 35 African countries by the age of 30, she found herself self hyperventilating through a panic attack, utterly confused why she felt so stressed, exhausted, and unhappy inside the life she always thought she wanted. So she did what anyone would do. She quit her job, sold all of her stuff, and traveled solo around the world, trying to find an answer to the question that was keeping her up at night, and that is, in all of her work fighting for the freedom and healing of others, was she living free herself? And we will find out what her answer to that is. Uh, but after she quit her job and traveled, she founded a company called Soulcation for fellow hustlers and perfectionists. That's me. And her forthcoming book titled Soulcation, Living a Life You Don't Need a Vacation From, addresses the anxiety epidemic facing one in four women in America. So Melody, welcome. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. So I have to ask you, what did that moment look like when you decided that the job that I always wanted was not good enough anymore mm -hmm. and I'm quitting it all and starting over? Mm. I always tell people that the letting go um, was the hardest part of this journey. And that was a very painful um, decision that came in the wake of my own divorce, um, the death of my mom. And it was a cosmic two by four that was hitting me on the head saying, you have lived to achieve goals all your life. And in some ways by external standards, I had hit them, but I had never thought about setting goals about how I feel inside. Mm -hmm. And deep down, I was feeling exhausted, anxious, overwhelmed. Um, I did. I had a panic attack on the bathroom floor at the Gates Foundation. And very few people knew that. And it was the moment where I could not get myself up on the bathroom floor. And I realized that there had to be another way of living. Um, and I didn't know if there would be, but thankfully I'm trained as a scientist. And so I decided to do a grand experiment um, and see if it worked or not. And so did you walk out of the bathroom that day and hand in your notice? Or was it a process to get to that point too? It was about a four month journey. Yeah, of therapy, of introspection. And I always, when I coach people, I also guide them that you don't have to make the decision right away, right? I think we first have to tell the truth to ourselves and really begin to let that truth sink in deep before we're willing to come take action based on that truth. Um, so I ended up quitting my job in um, summer 2018 and um yeah setting out with a suitcase and a smartphone and it looking back it was the best decision that i've ever made in my life but there was so much risk and so i have so many so much compassion for that person that is um knows that their life isn't working that envisions something different that wonders if there could be another way and i always had a map i always had a guide i was the girl that knew my next step um and the scariest thing i did was make a decision without knowing my next step and it was the best thing I ever did, but it is so hard to do. And so your mission, you're not telling all women to quit their jobs, sell their stuff and, and head across the world, but you're talking about a soul location and that's something different, right? It is. It is creating space in your life for you to finally connect with your own inner voice and your true desires. And whether it's panic like me or a divorce or struggle with mental health. It could be anything, but I think we can use busyness um, and we can use a full life to distract us from um, coming back home to ourselves and from finding our voice. And so, um, and from really admitting the truth about our story. And so Soulcation is an invitation for you to create space in your life for you whatever you're healing from whatever your struggle is it doesn't mean booking you know pulling out your credit card and booking a resort in bora bora or taking an extravagant vacation or traveling the world it may but i really as i reflected on my process it really was once i had that spaciousness in my life to begin journaling to begin meditating to sitting with my own story um 
that I realized the answers were inside of me. And I was looking for answers outside of myself the whole, my whole life and had, you know, great experts, like world renowned um, people in my life that were guiding me, but I didn't trust me. I didn't trust my own needs and desires. And so, so location, um, there, I do have a 12 step process that I coach people through and there's a free guide on my website, but it really is, um, daily practices that you can incorporate in your life for self care that will take care of your soul so that you can, um, learn to go inward to make your next decision. And you say that busyness is making us sick. What do you mean by that? I mean, Brene Brown says that busyness is our culture's status symbol, and it takes so much courage to choose rest and play in a world where busyness is, is the cultural status symbol. And what I mean by that is that we distance ourselves from our feelings. So whether it's, you know, we numb, we de deny, we actually disconnect from our own emotional world, and that's what's making us sick. And oftentimes, I mean, people can do that through sex or through alcohol or through unhealthy relationships, but you can also do it through success at work, right? You can also do it through a full social calendar. You can also do it through, you know, even serving others, right? Like my life as a humanitarian was a great example of me using busyness and helping other people's pain at the expense of turning towards mine. And so it doesn't mean that busyness is all bad. I think we can be in a, a state of flow and energy and when we're kind of living in our authentic creative self, uh, we can be doing things that bring us alive, but I think a lot of us um, get a sense of almost like a dopamine spike by checking off the to-do list, by achieving mm -hmm. something, by hitting the next milestone, and almost like happiness becomes the end result. Like if we're busy and we work hard, then we'll be happy rather than happiness actually being the way, right? So location is about teaching people how to do things that feel good in their everyday life um, because that gives us more energy, more power. Uh, really fills our tank to do the work we're created to do rather than, you know, pushing up against the struggle and resistance. And so I really do believe that, um, I, I mean, traveling and working in so many African countries, I saw people so happy and I was so confused by it because I came back to America and, you know, it's almost like you ask people how they're doing and then it's like, I'm fine or I'm, you know, I'm good, I'm busy. Um, right. As if that is healthy. And Deep down, I think I always wanted to be, to have, to not be busy, but I didn't even know what that looked like. And I was scared that I wouldn't be loved. And I always say that there's two things that we want in life. We want belonging and self-expression. And so many people, if busyness is this cultural status symbol that we're all measuring each other by, we all choose to belong in this world of busyness at the expense of our own self-expression. Um, and so I found a lot of freedom when I chose to leave busyness and I did it in an extreme way. And sometimes I do tell people you need that kind of extreme break, right? Like whether it's a few weeks or a few months of a break with yourself, but then have come back to be able to design a life where I work remotely and I work for myself. Um, and I really set my goals based on what feels good in my body, not just what I'm achieving in the world. So you said when you were in Africa, everyone was so happy. What is what is the difference? They're not as busy. They are just at a slower pace than us. Mm -hmm. Deeply connected. There was like a community spirit. I think when we have resources, we almost can self-protect based on our money or our power. Mm -hmm. And so um, there was a deep sense of community and caring and also just being seen, right? When you're living in a small house with lots of people, when right. you know, you're not moving about, your neighbors know you. Um, and so you're actually seen. And I think being seen um, is certainly a part of all of our healing journey. Um, I mean, I, I, obviously there was physical needs, but, but I always would go into villages at like, my job was malaria, right? So like, what is your malaria burden? How are you treating malaria? Talking to doctors and mothers. Um, and that wasn't really their real need, right? Like I would always be surprised that they would want family planning or they would just want like, some celebration for a kid's birthday or school fees. And so I was always assuming a need that was far different from what people really wanted. And so we never really know deep down what people's needs are. I think we're responsible for, for taking care of our own, but it was, it was a journey of learning that, um, not that I wasn't fixing the wrong problem, but that we all deeply want connection and belonging. And the very thing that I was seeing in Africa was the very thing I didn't have in my life because I had 
such a busy job that I had neglected my relationships and and that actually included my marriage um, for sure. Um, and so I just now always believe that we can learn from a diversity of people and that what we believe is good. I mean, what a gift to have rich relationships and time and wholeness in your life. Um, so I've learned equally as much from the people I've worked with in Africa as, as I've brought to the table. And yet we live in a society and culture where the, our needs are more, like a bigger house, more stuff more money you know and that's completely the opposite of what you're saying because connection doesn't cost anything it doesn't i always said the greatest gift of you know leaving my home selling my longings was learning that i could be at home with myself mm -hmm. right and until i developed that self-love i could have had a bigger home i could have had a home in a different city right i think you know this came in the wake of my divorce and i think it would have been so easy for me to divorce to be like okay new house, new husband, like, right. let's just keep this machine going. Let's see how like quick I can bounce back and get up off of my feet. I'm feeling um, judged. <laughs> <laughs> which is all, which is all like, I want that too, right? Like, we all want to get back. We all want to bounce back from our pain. Right. We don't want to sit in our right. pain. And there's so many ways to do it. But I found that I could be at home in myself anywhere, right? Like no matter what happens to me, no matter if people say yes or no, um, that I can actually go inward to tend, tend to my needs. And when you were traveling, did you have an itinerary or did you just hit the road and say, let me see where the day brought me? I, um, I planned about month by month. So I would know a few weeks out. Um, and I didn't know when it would end. I wasn't sure if I was gonna go back to global health or not. Again, I was so ashamed of my divorce and just mm. so embarrassed by how bad, like my, you know, like the men, the panic attacks were so bad and there was so much shame that I didn't know how to process that with my community. So it really was, you know, I was living in communities with strangers and meeting new people and like just like, like whispering, like, oh, I just got a divorce or like, oh, I'm struggling with anxiety just to like, I was like, will I be judged? Like, will they love me? Will I fit in? Mm -hmm. And to have these strangers around the world hold space for me and welcome me and, and, and support me in that journey, it made me realize, and I heard a lot of me too, right? Like there's so much shame. And what happened is every, whether it was a divorce story or a depression story or a failed job story, like everyone actually, when I spoke my truth, had their truth too. And so every country I was going to, I was like, oh, oh, I'm not alone. Like, you know, when I was back in my four walls in an empty house without a husband, I felt so much shame, but then I felt so seen. And so I ended up writing a lot. I ended up interviewing a lot of people about what it meant to be free because that was my question right I was a humanitarian and an ambassador for freedom and I felt shame inside instead of freedom and um so those strangers were the one my teachers that really taught me how you find freedom in you know not neglecting or ignoring the mistakes you've made in life but honor like acknowledging them but then also moving on right and like truly being able to love yourself even though, right? Like, even though you're divorced, even though mm -hmm. you made mistakes, even though, you know, things happened that you were, you were a part of. Because in my marriage, I wasn't, I wasn't walking away as an innocent person, right? I wasn't, and right. you can always point fingers of who did this wrong or that wrong. But I, I knew deep inside that there were things I was deeply ashamed about. Um, and so that travel um, was a way of healing my shame. And did you actually find a concrete answer as to what does it mean to be free? To me, it is constantly evolving, but to me, it means fully expressing myself, both like those dark parts I'm ashamed about and um, those big scary dreams that I was afraid to say out loud. And like when all parts of myself can be expressed without caring about anyone's opinion about worrying about being judged, about trying to pe please people, like that's when you're really free. Um, yeah. So that was my new definition of freedom and has resulted in me shifting to a creative career. And, um, you know, as a scientist leaving, I always had to be a certain way and earn a certain amount of money. And mm -hmm. now that I, 
I don't care what other people think as much, right? Like I know deep down that I can validate myself internally, then I'm free to do anything I want. And so there's, there's some uncertainty in that though, right? Because when you have that job, you know what your paycheck is, you know what the day to day, and now you're living this creative life that you designed, but there is a little bit of uncertainty and not knowing. So how do you reconcile that, which you, the, um, compared to the way you were, because you're a, a rule maker and a to doer and a, you know, you cross the, everything off the list and that's how I am too. So I mean, you to go from one way to the other is a huge leap. Yeah, and I, I guess I want your listeners to know I'm two years into this journey and still, you know, making my way by walking. I, I walk the Camino de Santiago, which is a 800 kilometer pilgrimage across Spain. But every time you walk by another pilgrim, you say to each other, you make your way by walking, uh-huh. right? Like you, you don't get this answer in your head of, or formula in your head of how you, how you manage uncertainty, right? You just take the next right step and the next right step and you learn to trust that. And I always say the longest journey was the 18 inches from my head to my heart. Um, because I think to manage uncertainty, you have to trust your intuition quite a bit more. Um, you know, it's not the same model of a, a checklist and to-do list and one-year goals and three-year goals. And yes, I have those. Um, but I've also, I think the experimentation phase, like I always say, you actually have to go into the darkness and get used to living in the darkness for a while. Mm-hmm. Like we all need a winter. We all have to die before we can come back to life because I think that season teaches you that even if it's dark, like even if you just know the next right thing or one step ahead, you can like in your body, your, your nervous system begins to wire to realize you're going to be okay. And so, yeah, you just like, like, I'm almost getting choked up here because it's so, it, it's just so beautiful because I think so many women, especially get paralyzed because they're afraid of the unknown and they're afraid of that darkness. And mm-hmm. what you're saying is it's just, it's okay to sit in that darkness and there you'll mm-hmm. come out of it, mm-hmm. but just to feel all of that, you mm-hmm. know, and I think we're, we're a society of putting a bandaid over everything. You want the quick fixes. You want to feel happy immediately. You know, that's why mm-hmm. so many people jump into second marriages so quickly is because they're trying to not feel alone. Mm-hmm. And not feel the pain. And the more I study emotions, the more I realize pain is an emotion that's going to move through you, right? Like it needs to be processed. But once it's felt, it actually passes. Um, and if someone would have told me right at my divorce to be like, you're going to be okay, right? You're going to have to feel this pain intensely. Mm-hmm. But the, the more you commit to actually feeling it, the faster you're going to feel joy and freedom and happiness because you actually can't feel the depth of happiness unless you're willing to feel the depth of pain. Um, and so the more, the deeper you can go in both of those emotions, the more alive you're going to be as a human. And um, it is so easy to, we all inherit women memos right I think as as women we inherit the script of what good is supposed to be and what we're supposed to get done and whether it's a divorce or something else it's like okay well I'll just re- rewrite a better memo right like I'll just keep this narrative in my head of how I'm supposed to behave and the great invitation of pain whether it's a divorce or something else is actually to question that memo to be like did I inherit a script of whatever what my husband expected me or my family expected of me or the world expected that actually is it true or I don't choose to believe is true, right? Like we can rewrite these scripts. Right. And so the beauty of a season of pain is actually being able to question those subconscious beliefs that are driving your life. Um, research says that almost 80% of our decision-making is driven by unconscious thought. And so wow. that's why I believe in vocation so much because it gives you an opportunity to reflect on your unconscious thought because that's what's driving yeah, your next relationship or your next job or your next, you know, big move in life is a lot of these inherited subconscious like scripts or narratives. So you said it's a 12 step uh, approach. Can you share two of the steps? Mm, Yes. So there are 12 steps, which is modeled in some ways after the AA, which I've um, gone through related to codependency and just believe in the 12 step program. But um, the, the first step is creating space. So it's literally just like looking at your calendar and how do you, where do you spend time with yourself? If you don't spend time with yourself, like 
you know, if moms particularly will come to me and be like, I don't have even like 10 minutes in my day. And I'm just like, that's okay. Like that's a reality now, but like we need to rewire your life so you have time for yourself. Mm. So the first step is like, and I think it's the most rewarding step because all of a sudden, once you start giving yourself fun things in your life, like I literally have clients write a list of what makes them happy. Like what, what do you do on vacation, right? Like tell me all the things you do on vacation. And then we try to find a way to like weave them, even if it's like for 30 minutes into their, mm. their normal day to day. So that's the first step. Um, and then the second step, which comes with it is creating boundaries. So that's a big lots one. Of, yeah, that's a big one. And uh, there's a lot of deep work that can, can go into that. But I find when people have space and when they have the power to use their voice to set boundaries, um, but everything, everything else we're talking about, about how do you, yeah, leap out of a job? How do you live in uncertainty? How do you make a relationship transition or a career transition becomes a lot easier if you have space for yourself and you have boundaries. Wow. And what about anxiety? Because I know that that's a big part of so much of the work that you do. How do you, almost like everyone I know has some form of anxiety, whether it's debilitating or it's something that's keeping them awake at night. What do you do with that? Aside, mm. Other than medicate it. <laughs> yes. I mean, I have been on medication myself. Obviously I'm not a therapist, but deeply believe in all forms of treatment mm -hmm. um, for anxiety. Um, but I, I would just say to the person who's like fighting to fix their anxiety, like what if you tried softer instead of tried harder? Because I do think so many women with anxiety are actually trying to try harder to solve it and fix it. And they read books and maybe they go to therapy and they're consuming all this content that's in their head, but they're not actually giving themselves permission to do less or be softer or be kinder to themselves. So um, practices of self-compassion and Kristen Ness, I think is her name, has been a big teacher in my life. Um, but I don't think you can fight anxiety by more effort. I think you actually fight anxiety by softness and by giving yourself things that make you happy and feel good. And we're all waiting for a permission slip that only we can give ourselves. Mm. Um, and so writing that permission self slip to yourself, I think is a great gift you can give yourself on the road of healing your anxiety. Do you believe it's possible to design a life that you don't need a vacation from? I do. I wholeheartedly do. Um, and that is why my life mission is to help people um, create a life that's so in alignment with their authentic voice and that has so much space for them to do um, the things they love to do on vacation in their everyday life. I mean, I, I mean, I will acknowledge I'm part of a digital nomad community and I do work in lots of countries around the world when we're not in a pandemic um, because I do think adventure and diversity and travel is always good for our soul. But when you ask people what they do on vacation, like the lists are the same. Like you can go to the spa, you read a book, you go on a long walk in nature. Like these are, um, these are things that we have more access to than we really mm -hmm. realize. And so I, I mean, I'll be the first one to buy an airplane ticket when the world opens back up. So I'm, I'm not like against vacations and exploring new places. Um, but I wholeheartedly want to convince people that they can have a life that feels feels like vacation, right? Like, tell me what you want to feel on vacation. And usually it's lightness and rest and not busy. And those are feel those are feelings we can bring into our everyday life. Wow. And that's what your book is based on too, right? It is. Yeah. Coming so to you in 2021. Yes. I can't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for my signed copy. It'll be at your house. So Melody, you have created uh, masterminds as well. What does that mean in relation to the work that you're doing? So I have found that going on this journey for women of choosing rest and a different lifestyle is incredibly countercultural and incredibly hard. And I went on this journey alone and had to let go of a lot of friendships and a lot of ways of living. And so I am committed just to creating community for people who say, I want to give myself that permission slip. I want more rest in my life, but I don't have a group of girlfriends that can rally around me and support me and keep me accountable and cheer me on. Um, so I create these um, groups of eight women and um, I'm doing it with my friend who's actually a former U.S. Olympic athlete and um, performance coach. And we hold space for you and help you design a self-care plan. And we 
uh, meet weekly and it is really just it's, it is a it is a high level of commitment but for people who say I'm I'm done like I'm done with busyness I'm done with all the lists I'm done with putting everyone else ahead of myself I want to experiment with another way of living we go deep into the 12 steps of location um, we help you plan and execute your location um, and then we help you design the new life that you want on the other side of that and there's work there too, though, right? Because you talk about pain and going towards your pain rather than covering it up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. This is not like a quick fix. Let's like help mm -hmm. me um, put the pieces back into my life together to just like make it go as fast as can. It really is if you want to deconstruct your life, because I've learned that unlearning has been the, help, the most helpful thing. Everyone, you spend decades of your life learning how to learn. And then you realize you have to unlearn the lies that weren't serving you. And so this mastermind is really about how do we unlearn the things that aren't serving us so that we can step in and choose the things that we really want. So there is, yes, it is for people who are willing to go through that like unlearning, undoing, deconstructing process um, and create a new life. It's such important work. And I feel like you're creating a movement that is going to pick up and hopefully become part of so many of our lives because I think we all need locations. I think every single one of us is guilty of the never ending to do list that, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and not taking enough time for yourself. Well, yes, I hope it's a, like we all go on vacation. Mm -hmm. The average American goes on vacation for two and a half weeks a year. Why not use some of that time um, to go on a location and just set aside a few days of reflection rather than um whatever else we're doing so and so i know there's somebody out there who's saying yes like i need a location and i need melody to help me get there how can they find you and connect with you melodymiles.com is my website where you can find all my information there is a free guide that you can download about how to kickstart your location which shows shows you all the the 12 steps and journaling questions and then if you want to go deeper they can schedule a free call with me um, which is a, a short application slash interview about joining the mastermind. And we um, start those about every six months. So the first one is kicking off now and we'll do another one in the fall. Um, and I'm, I'm over at social media on the melodymiles.com. Aren't we all yes, scrolling we through are. Instagram? And one final tip in our modern world, um, what can you suggest as to what we can do right now today to take back a little bit of our time? Mm. I would say make an appointment on your calendar with yourself and take mm -hmm. yourself on a date once a, once a week. I think so many women look to men okay. and husbands and partners to mm -hmm. take themselves on a date, but um, take yourself on a date um, and do something you love. I love that. And I tell my clients, dress up, go out to a really nice restaurant by yourself. And usually they look at me a little cross-eyed and they're like, what? No, because it's so uncomfortable. And that's the point, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. You're so good, girl. I'm encouraging so, so many women. Uh, thank you so much, Melody. I am so excited to follow you on your journey and see your book on the shelves and see everything else that you're going to do. So everyone else, um, definitely follow her. All of the links are in the show notes. And thanks for tuning in. Thank you.